Hello friends, it is that time again with that Ericsson. It is Saturday, April 8th. Um, I just wanted to put together this quick video for beginners coming into Crowfall. They don't know what's going on. They got their beta invite. They're super excited. And I want to just give you that first um, 10 minutes of what you should be doing and where to go from there. Um, there's a few things that I want to cover here. Uh, once you log in on this home screen, typically you'll see more campaigns listed. Uh, unfortunately, right now at the time of this recording, they are testing some changes to statistics, so a lot of the servers that you would normally see here aren't here. We usually see a faction-based PvP server where, uh, depending on which faction you choose, you can only attack the opposing other two. Um, I made a quick lore video that uh, explains about the factions that you can check out. So you would see those here normally. Um, also, this Launch Kingdom button might not be available to you. Uh, it's for Alpha 1 and Alpha 2 backers now have the access to their own personal Eternal Kingdoms. Um, I did a short video on that too about Eternal Kingdoms. I'll make sure to put that in the description below. Okay, so you jumped in, you're excited to get started. Um, the first thing that everybody should be doing, of course, is to pop open their skills. Okay, so here we go, we see the skill training screen, and it's broken down into two sections, the universal and the arc archetype tree. Um, I made a quick video about the skill system, the pros and cons that you guys can check out if you want a little more information on that and how I feel about it. But basically, it's time-based. You can kick off and have one universal skill going at a time, and up to three archetype uh, uh, classes going at a time as well. So as you can see here, I am training right now excavation because I'm into the necromancy, and my three classes that I like to focus on are champion, knight, and templar at this point, waiting for forge master. So you want to start and get these going right away. You can see how long they'll take. It'll say next point in or full completion in, and that way you can you know set timers, set alarms to how you go. Now it is a um, you know diminishing return system, so the further you get into the tree, things take longer. As you can see here, I still have like 17 days on this night skill because I've been doing the night since it started, so that's a long time. Uh, anyway, I'm not going to talk about what you should be taking. It's up to you. We have potions that help with crafting and exploration, so those can be used to uh, boost up your crafting and, and harvesting uh, points and up to three archetype skills. Now, I also talked about the VIP system a little bit in some other videos. Uh, if you're a VIP, as of right now, the, the, we're thinking that you're going to get these three archetype skills, and if you were not VIP, you would only be able to train one archetype skill. That's still up in the air, and it's not super important for this video. Alright, so now back at the, at the screen, I would suggest that new players, obviously, should be joining into a PvE uh, server. So that's what we're going to do. You would just join match, and I'll jump back in once we're in there. Okay guys, here we are. We have loaded in, and now we are standing in front of the Altar of Heroes. Now, we're standing because I'm a knight, but um, typically you will launch in here as the crow. Now remember, the crow is your basically your whole account-wide soul, and you jump into these vessels of archetypes. So when you load in, you might look a little different. You might be the flying crow bird, which is pretty cool. So as you can see here in the Altar of Heroes, we have all the champions except some that are, you know still aren't in the game, so we have some empty pedestals. But all you need to do is run up to the, your chosen class, uh, your chosen archetype, and you'll hit F to change your vessel. Once you get into your vessel, you're going to be able to do some customization. Not yet, but this is what it will look like. The customization feature isn't in just yet. But here's where you would be able to change all the information and put in your name. All right. So here we go. Okay, now we're in. So the first thing that you're going to want to know is don't go by my inventory. You are going to start with absolutely zero. You'll be just uh, the only thing you will have is the ability to chop down trees. And as you can see, in the PvE world, trees are pretty abundant. Um, so the first thing you're going to want to start doing is chopping down some trees because it's the only material that you can get. So we're going to head on over to the trees. So all you have to do is just roll up to the tree here. You'll hold F and you'll start chopping it down. You'll notice the life bar of the tree going down as well as my stamina. Now stamina will de diminish as you do more actions, okay? And as you chop down trees, you'll often see that apples fall out. Now the apples will replenish the little food bar that you see here, which is crazy because I only got apples. Um, now, as you hit certain thresholds of food, you will stop to regain stamina, you may stop to regain health, and you'll be starving. Now, there's more to it 
than that, but they haven't really fleshed out the starvation mechanics yet. Just very basic. You'll you'll lose regeneration. All right. Now the next thing you're going to want to do is make all of your basic tools. Now basic tools are under the basic crafting, basic rune tools. Now you'll see here. This is the 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 skill tree for where you, um, the creation tree. You're going to see wood, wood, and then a wild card agent, which can be any of these, wood, stone, or ore. So since you can only make wood, obviously the first thing you're going to do is do wood, 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 and when you do that, you're going to craft one of these, the basic runestone hammers. I have already crafted it. Okay, so you would just click assemble, and then you click make item, and you will have a basic runestone hammer. Now, now that you have a hammer, you can go and get these cobblestones, okay? Cobblestones don't look like this. This is ore. This is slag. You can tell by this uh, gray dark vein that runs through it and it's a little more shiny. So this is stone and this is ore, okay? These are the only three materials you'll get in the PVE realms, the knotwood, the uh, cobblestone, and the slag. <coughs> okay, so then after you get some of your cobblestone, you can do wood, wood, and one stone, and you will make a pick. Okay, you'll make a runestone pick, and the runestone pick can be used to loot the slag. Okay, so now you have the ability to take the uh, one more crafting tool that's not as used, but because there's not a lot of creatures. But if you take wood, wood, and one ore, you will make a skinning knife. Okay, and a skinning knife can be used to obviously skin animals that you kill in the wild that we will probably not see here because uh, I'm just going to stick close to the uh, altar here. So there's your first basic step. Now that you have some of those tools, you're able to basically gather all four of the main types of materials that are in the game. Um, now one of the other things that I should mention are the harvesting potions and the crafting potions. Now since this is testing, they want people to be able to craft, they want people to be able to harvest, so they have these potions in place. And these cost two ore to make, one in one. Now, I would suggest that you don't have to make the dust finder, because dust, as of right now, doesn't really have a purpose. It's probably going to be currency, but not super important just yet. And you don't need to really focus on mother loads, which are big, giant... Uh, you can think of it as like a group monster. You should go and try to take down these bigger nodes in the PvP worlds with friends and people that have better crafting uh, pickaxes and materials. Okay? And then plentiful harvest. So out of this list, I only think you need to make beneficial harvest, critical chance, critical amount, and plentiful uh, harvest potions, okay? So once you have those, when you loot and you try to uh, loot the the nodes, you're going to get a lot more materials out of them. Sometimes you'll pop with a big explosion of a lot more. Uh, finally, they have the same types of potions, but for crafting. Now, I'm not going to go into crafting today. That's a whole different beast. It's huge. It's very complex. Um, but basically, you can get these potions that help you get assembly which makes your chance of success higher and experimentation which allows you to basically make the item as you um, see fit I don't know if you if you haven't played Star Wars Galaxies it's similar to that where you could experiment on the sword and let's just say I want my sword to be more durable then I care about damage for whatever reason that might be. You can do that. You can experiment in the durability more than the uh, damage, and there will be limited points in that system. Those potions will give you more points to experiment. All right? So that's crafting. That is the uh, first five minutes for what you should be doing to get your tools going, and also the potions on um, how to get more materials out of them. Once you're getting that generated, you're going to want to create your basic armor set, which is also under the basic crafting section. You're going to want to make one of each of these. Uh, you know, you see here it takes some wood, stone, and ore. I actually made a video of how quick it takes to gear up from nothing to basic armor in, in one of my last videos. You can check it out. Um, and then your weapon, same thing. It depends on your class. You can usually tell what your class uses, because sometimes it's confusing. It doesn't really say um, and, you know, there's a couple two-handed weapons that you would think maybe go on you, but uh, on a champion or a legionnaire, and it doesn't. So, just take a look at your little paper doll, ask in the chat, and then craft your basic set of gear. Now that you have your basic set of gear, your basic armor is ready to go, um, you're free to do whatever you want. You can go into a PvP world and start jumping in, trying to find some people to kill. Um, you know, you can check out your skills here, uh, under K. And it shows you all of your all of the skills that you have in 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 your tray here. I don't know why it's not changing. It might be a bug, but usually if you click these, you can see the other things. But you get the picture. You can kind of see what you're doing here um, with the skills and 
start finding people to kill. Start finding members of the community because uh, this is a game where it's pretty punishing solo if you're out and by yourself. You're gonna get ganked. There's not much you can do about it um, other than grouping up and trying to make good friends, okay? Because uh, if you die, you will lose everything in your inventory. In the testing, we do have the spirit bank, okay? You hit that B button, brings up the spirit bank. And what you can do is move gear from your inventory to the spirit bank and vice versa. Now the transfer process takes a uh, you know, 30 seconds to a minute for it to complete. But once it's in the spirit bank, it's safe. You can then transfer from here to any inventory on your other campaign worlds because each of the campaigns is technically separate. So for example, if I logged out here with all this gear, this stuff in my inventory and went to a PVP world that I haven't been in, my inventory will be empty. It won't have this. But I could take the you know ore and copper that I mined and move it from my spirit bank into my inventory on another server, uh, on another campaign. So that's something that's in the testing. We do not expect and will not most likely have a spirit bank once the game releases. It's going to focus more on um, surviving the whole campaign and putting things into an embargo and getting it out. I also have a video on campaign systems that you guys can check out. Um, that being said, guys, that's pretty much it. It's, uh, you know, once you get into this point, it's more for testing. We are in early alpha phases, so, you know, mind the dust. It's not a big deal. We're getting used to it. Um, and today, like I said, there's just not another PvP world for us to check, so unfortunately I can't do that. Um, I also know that videos haven't been coming out. We have been having a little news drought, and that's okay. The guys at Artcraft are hard at work. They just hired a couple new members, so we're happy to see that their team is growing, which means the game is growing. So, with that being said, you know, be sure, if you like this video, to give me a like, subscribe. I plan to do only Crowfell content on this channel, and super excited to do more. And if you guys have any questions, comments, or things that you would like to see or know, please feel free to comment in the comment section below, and I will make sure I answer that accordingly. So, until next time... It is that Erickson, and take care, friends.